Today we are going to take a look at JP Morgan Chase. Stock ticker symbol JPM. It is headquartered in the USA and service regions all around the world. It has a market cap of 380 billion and is considered a mega cap company. The market cap is an important metric because companies with larger market cap often have more pricing power, liquidity, and lower failure rate, whereas companies with smaller market cap tend to have more growth potential. What sector and industry the company is in greatly influences its ability to deal with market uncertainty. It is in the financial sector and bank industry. JP Morgan Chase operates as a financial services company worldwide. It operates through four segments, consumer and community banking, corporate and investment bank, commercial banking, and asset and wealth management. The consumer and community banking segment offers deposit, investment and lending products, payments and services to consumers, lending, deposit and cash management and payment solutions to small businesses, mortgage origination and servicing activities, residential mortgages and home equity loans, and credit card, auto loan, and leasing services. The corporate and investment bank segment provides investment banking products and services, including corporate strategy and structure advisory, and equity and debt markets capital raising services, as well as loan origination and syndication, payments and cross-border financing, and cash and derivative instruments, risk management solutions, prime brokerage, and research. This segment also offers security services, including custody, fund accounting and administration, and securities lending products for asset managers, insurance companies, and public and private investment funds. The commercial banking segment provides financial solutions, including lending, payments, investment banking, and asset management to small business, large and mid-sized companies, local governments, and non-profit clients, and commercial real estate banking services to investors, developers, and owners of multifamily, office, retail, industrial, and affordable housing properties. The asset and wealth management segment offers multi-asset investment management solutions in equities, fixed income, alternatives, and money market funds to institutional clients and retail investors, and retirement products and services, brokerage, custody, trusts and estates, loans, mortgages, deposits, and investment management products. The company also provides ATM, online and mobile, and telephone banking services. In short, it is an American multinational investment bank and financial services holding company. It has a five-year compound annual revenue growth rate of 7.5%. The revenue growth is unstable and the revenue trend looks inconsistent. The revenue trend is important as growing companies often have sales go up first followed by profit growth. On the other hand, when sales become stagnant, it may also give us a hint that the growth phase of the company may come to an end if no critical change is made. The net income is growing. The net income trend looks very good, as it can grow its profit consistently. The net income is one of the most important metrics an investor should be aware of. In the long term, stocks always follow the earnings trend. It has been buying back some shares with shares decreasing gradually. We should always follow closely if a company is buying back or issuing more shares, as both of these activities greatly impact the return shareholders can get. It has a nice dividend and has been steadily growing its dividend throughout the years. The dividend history gives us a peak of a company's cash flow stability. The overall shareholder return of JP Morgan Chase is in line with the historical performance of the SPY. The total return and annual growth rate history of a company can show us what the performance trend was and how it had navigated through difficult times. Most companies tend to perform similarly with a slight decline in growth as time goes by. JP Morgan Chase has a 37-year total return of 4,204% with a 37-year compound annual growth rate of 10.6%. If you had $1,000 invested 37 years ago, you would have $42,040 now. 
Currently, the price is at around 129 with a 52 week high at 173 and 52 week low at 115. It is near the lower end of its 52 week range. It has a P ratio of 9.4 and forward P ratio of 11.4. It has a cash position of 1.5 trillion and long-term liabilities of around 680 billion. JP Morgan Chase is considered a wide moat company according to Morningstar's rating. Currently the margin is 34% and future margin after 5 years is expected to be 30%. The margin is expected to be in slight decline after 5 years. The company's margin and moat reflects the pricing power of the company and the projected trend is also important. We want to own a company that is able to stay profitable and relevant. Now, about the future projection. It has a five-year forecast revenue compound annual growth rate of 3.1% and five-year forecast EPS compound annual growth rate of 9.9%. The near-term growth is expected to be small. It has more beats than miss of analyst consensus EPS estimates in the last four quarters. It has an average performance. The overall analyst recommendation rating is a hold with trend shifting towards sell recently. The rating trend gives us a clue of the changes of what analysts thought about the stock. Out of 27 analyst one-year price targets, the range is 120 to 200 with an average price of 157 which is well above the current stock price. Now we compare JP Morgan Chase with US Treasuries and SPY. Currently, the 10-year Treasury yield is around 2.75%. The return yield of SPY is at around 10%. The SPY has an average forward PE around 17.5 now. JP Morgan Chase has a dividend plus 10-year growth forecast plus shares buyback yield at 10% and a forward PE around 11.4. We have to be cautious that this is just a rough prediction of JP Morgan Chase's future performance. The forecast can be changed at any time and the actual revenue or net income the company is able to get depends heavily on the true market condition. Looks like JP Morgan Chase is cheaper than the SPY. Looks like it might be a good buy. We will try to summarize all the information above to give us an overall impression of JP Morgan Chase. In summary, JP Morgan Chase is a mega cap excellent company with small growth and wide moat, and probably undervalued now. JP Morgan Chase may be benefited in a rising interest environment and can be a good hold at current valuation. Now that's a review for JP Morgan Chase stock. Click the subscribe button for more up to date stocks review. If you like our content, leave us a comment and click the like button to give us some support. We hope to see you next time.